Hoover has been sort of hinting that, you know, that moment is, is going to come, you know. So you probably knew. You know, oh, you, you probably weren't surprised that that's what he wanted to do. Oh, right. Yeah, and we had talked about it during the drive. I knew we were going to go for two if we scored. Um, and so, you know, we have – actually, we – We've burned a lot of two-point plays. We've already run several of them, three of them so far. And uh, the one that I called, you know, was um, played off of the one that we had we had already done. It was kind of like a <clears throat> variation off of it, which was, um, you know, you watch on film. If we would have just ran the original one that we had already run, it would have worked. And so I, I don't know if they didn't watch the two-point play that we ran before or whatever, but it was uh, – yeah, ended up, you know, as all calls that don't work, you wish you had it back. Did you know uh, the whole time that that was going to be the play calling you were going to go with? Uh, no. Um, so that we have two of them. And just kind of uh, went back and forth um, on which one we wanted to do. And um, and so we ran out there, and then they, call, they called a timeout, correct, is what it was. So they called a timeout, and then we just kind of mulled over. Do you want to stay with this one, this one, this one? Then we decided to stay with with that one. So, but we have two. We had two of them in those. We could have, you know, run another one. We had two. Yeah, we ran it against our defense. You know, and felt and felt good about it after we ran it. You know, we looked at it and um, yeah, just you know felt good about it. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I think, you know, LD's, you know, doing a little bit. He, he's get, We're gaining more confidence in his ability to block one guy, you know, one-on-one -on -one off the edge. He's doing a better job. Um, I thought Oregon State did as good a job as anybody at um, getting guys free uh, in, their, in their scheme. They did a good job. They got us a couple times um, where our tackle kind of had to, recognize and identify that that blitz was coming, slow down, pick up the edge rusher from the outside when he, he normally has the inside gap. But, um, and you know, we got it fixed later on in the game, but they got us the first time we ran it and they gave, came free and we had to go back and get it fixed. Um, you know, and I felt like, uh, you know, the guy did a great job jumping the snap. Was he offsides? I mean, that, that you know, apparently they didn't think so. Um, but, uh, you know, that was tough. And he timed the snap count really well. But overall, you know, we're, you know, trying to work on it every week and get better. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a process, you know, when you have young guys up there. Yeah, you know, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I see it every day in practice. Um, you know, just the, the relationship that him and Jaden had built is, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. They trust each other. He knows he's starting to know it. That's why I'm saying it, it, I wish he had another year with us because they're just starting to get that relationship that you have that, you know, that uh, you can really do special things, you know, where like he could, you know, vie for the Bolitnikoff Award, you know, things like that if he, if he had another year with us, with Jaden, you know, and then being together, going through summer together, all of that stuff. I would come back and say that, you know, he, had a, he would have a real good shot at winning that award next year if he had another year left, you know, something like that. Um, and because that's the type of player that I, that I think he is. And, and I, I wish, you know, like I said, I really do wish I had him for, for one more year because um, he, he is, he, you can see he, he's literally getting better. You can watch him get better. And so, um, but yeah, man, he's 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 been a, he's doing things that I thought he was gonna do. He's a very very similar to Quentin Patton, very very similar uh, type of type of player. Um, they both are slashers. They can get off press coverage. They have a wonderful one and two step pop pop, and then they can get inside. Uh, they can get off press. 
they restack the deep ball. They can catch the deep ball. They can run intermediate routes. Um, so, you know, I, I see him, you know, like my opinion matters, but, you know, I see him as a high top, top draft choice. Yes. 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 Right. Yeah, and it's good experience for him because when he goes somewhere and when he plays in the NFL, he's going to have to get, get used to another quarterback. And he had to do that with Manny. He had to do that with Jaden. He's going to have to do that with another guy. And it's, and you got to learn that process because, you, you know, it's free agency and all that trading. And, I mean, you're going to play for more than one team now in the NFL, it just seems like. You're going to bounce around a little bit. Um, but it's, it's his willingness. He practices really, really hard. And that's what I tell receivers is, you know, because I've coached three walk-on receivers that have, two of them have gotten drafted. And you – it's all how you work at practice. You can be developed as a receiver. Offensive linemen, you, you can be developed, but you can't, like, you're either 6'5", 300 pounds, or you're not 6'5", 300 pounds. A wide receiver can come in all shapes and sizes. And if you have, I've seen guys that I just thought were average dudes, and they've worked themselves into the NFL and be an NFL receiver. So it really speaks to his, his work ethic, man, it's in his ability to be coached and humble himself and say, I don't know, you let me know, coach, you know, coach me up. And, um, and I always tell guys that when, when I go out recruiting and I talk to receivers, if you'll, if you'll come in humble and you'll um, ask to be coach and not be prideful and think you know everything, you know, if you'll, if you'll do that and you'll work hard every single day, I, I promise you that you will have a shot to play in the NFL. Yeah, uh, you know they're they're not they're different than Utah. You know they're more they have more team speed. Um, they're they're athletic. They they run to the ball. They're rangy. They got guys up front. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that because I knew that question was going to come up. How do you compare them to you know USC, Utah, um, all three of those types? That they're, they're, they're really tough to go against. You know they have a really good good defensive scheme and they're simple uh, and that I think that's what makes them good because they work on the same things every day they don't get themselves out of position much um, they put they can put pressure on the quarterback in a four and three man front and that's why they got so many interceptions because they like to drop eight in their zone package uh, and there's not a lot of holes out there and they force quarterbacks to make throws right and they're playing from their uh, the other teams are playing from behind a lot, forcing, and so the quarterbacks are feeling the pressure to force throws, force the ball down the field. We got to catch back up, and they're throwing the ball in a drop eight zone coverage, and they're they're intercepting a lot of balls. So they everything they do, they make it tough because whenever you can play somebody in just your four man front, and you can get pressure on the quarterback without sacrificing other players, and just you know sitting back and playing in your zone and all that stuff, and manning people up, then you're you're going to be good. I mean that that's the key to success is having good upfront people doesn't you don't have to take somebody else in the structure and throw them at the quarterback and you lose a guy in coverage that's the key to success being good up front on both sides of the ball you can't have a good team unless you're good up front and they're they're really solid up front they can put pressure on you with those four and three guys that's what makes them good and then they got great athlete they got athletic dudes all over the place out there highly recruited guys you know, that just run to the football. That's what makes them good. They're hard to beat. Give me an idea of early in the season, how many freshman mistakes Jason's making as opposed to where he is now? Uh, you know, I, I, you would, not as mu much as you think. The thing that we got to, you know, that we're working on is starting the game. All right? And that's where we seem to be having problems on both sides of the ball is starting games and I you know we've talked about it to exhaustion you know I don't know what is it is it 
inexperience? Is it nerves? Is it, you know, and Jaden falls into that category a little bit. And so, you know, and it's my job to bring some form of a comfort level to him to start the game off. Because once he gets in the game and he gets his, in his groove, um, he rolls. And most of his mistakes have come um, in the early, early drives. And, you know, it's kind of hard where we look at the, the plays every week and go, hey, man, I, I've asked him, hey, Tell me what you want to run on the first play again. Yeah, I'll call it like 10 times in a row. I don't care. Um, you know, just let me know what your comfort level is. Let's go. And, you know, and, dude, typical Jaden, everything's great. You know, all the plays work. Uh, whatever. Call whatever you want, coach. You know, so uh, we're trying to get to the bottom of that. You know, we just got to start faster. But to answer your question, it's usually in the, in the beginning of the game. But once the game starts, it, you know, and he's got a couple drives under his belt, he usually doesn't make very many mistakes at all. You know, we got a, uh, and I talked to him about it today. I talked about it last week. You practice winning the game. You know, winning the game, it doesn't come out there on Saturday. It came out there today. And today's over with now. So we either did really well or we wasted the time. Uh, but you have to practice winning the game. You have to practice finishing. We haven't finished. So you go out there and you practice finishing. And the way, the way you do that is, uh, you know, we put them in scenarios. Today, you know, we had 40 seconds left, put the ball on the 38-yard line. It was third and eight. Um, no timeouts. And we just we tell them that right out of the middle of the practice, put them in that situation and go. Right? And so we practice that, you know, being prepared for those moments that it seems like we have a plethora of since I've been here. Every game comes down to the last dang drive. Uh, so we've, we've been trying to practice those things so that the kids, it doesn't surprise them. Like, here we go. This is, this is it. We take the, the um, situations that we had the game before uh, that maybe we failed on a play or, a, or somebody did something wrong according to situational football, and we put them back in that situation so that they can learn from it. And, you know, you just hope one of these days – They've gone through all the situations, and then we're going to be on the other side of it and win. That's, that's all you can do as a coach. And, and as, as long as the kids aren't quitting on you, which ours not, we practiced really hard today. Very, uh, mu there was so much energy out at practice, which is great to see. Um, we just got to finish the games. We, got, you know, we can't turn the ball over. We can't jump off sides. And you practice that every day. And so that's you know, kind of like all we've been talking about is practice winning the game. Yeah, that's a great question, and um, absolutely. I, I always tell players that um, – because, you, you know, when a player gets injured, you know, you always want to tell them something nice, like, hey, there's a reason for everything. Put your arm around them and all that stuff. Uh, however, uh, I have found that when a player does get sustained a, not a, you know, a season-ending injury, but a, a one- or two-week injury, that if they'll sit back and they'll approach practice the right way and they'll do it like a coach and they'll sit back, um, when they get back, they'll be a better player. And, and, and um, Jaden specifically told Coach Burko when the game was over, and he was almost like, wow, because – Think about it. That that kid hasn't been on the sideline in five or six. He, I don't know if he's ever been on the sideline. I think he started every game he's ever been a part of in his entire life, you know, because he's always been that guy. And that was his first game where he sat back and he got a chance to listen to the coaches, watch Joey. He uh, uh, watched the safety. He watched that guy intercept Joey because Joey didn't look him off quite long enough. And he came, turned right around to Coach Burko, and he said, uh, you know, he needed to look the safety at and he was like, oh, wow, like I'm learning football. Yeah, that, you know, that's what you do when you're on the sideline. I think he experienced that for the first time in his life. And he told us, he told the coaches that he, because of that, um, because of that he is a better player. He actually said that. So that was a good question. Uh, he's still struggling a little bit with his arm. But um, we're hoping he gets there. We'll see what it's like tomorrow. Yep.